early November of 2021. I, after listening to you guys for a while, I was like, I need to reverse diet. And I've gone from 1300 calories to about 2400 calories in oh. five months. And I have, I have not gained a pound of weight. That's awesome. Wow. I changed my training from hypertrophy based always to strength. I have not really gone over eight reps in about five months. I'm wondering where I should go from here. I'm not sure. It is hard for me to eat over 2,300 calories now. My appetite is just going down. So I feel like I'm in a okay place to cut. But at the same time, I'm like wondering. I never even really got into a big bulk. You're in a phenomenal I, place. Yeah, you're doing awesome. You're in a phenomenal place. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, to, to go from 1,400 to 2,500 calories is incredible. You did the the perfect thing, right? So you, you took you transitioned into a a training modality that you you don't ever do, and you've started mm -hmm. to increase calories, focusing on strength. Like you're, and you're the ideal situation. You're exactly what I try and do to any client when we when we first get started. Is I want to build their metabolism up to a place to where they you say exactly what you just said, which is I it's I have a really hard time getting to twenty six hundred calories, just a lot of food. And you comfor yeah. you comfortably could go down the other direction and be totally fine. That's where you mm -hmm. want to be. Yeah, I also didn't do any cardio. All I, I inclined walk sometimes, but that's just for like mental health, just awesome. relaxing, it's, walking. It's so almost, it's almost I haven't like, really done much cardio. It's almost like we tell the truth when we tell people. <laughs> yeah. what to do. Yeah. You listen, you guys. See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> hey, real quick. Here's how you can get free access to Maps Aesthetic. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll give you free access to Maps Aesthetic. One more thing before we get to the rest of the show and the rest of the show is amazing. Uh, we're running a sale right now. Maps Strong, Maps Powerlift together in the Maps Power Bundle. Normally would retail at 300 bucks. Right now the bundle is $79.99. So if you want to do both programs and you want that discount, head over to Maps March. Dot com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. You want to get a bigger bench press? Get stronger at the overhead press. Ooh, I like that advice. Yeah. yeah. Is there any, it's, you know, there's certain exercises that contribute so much to other exercises that sometimes it makes sense to stop focusing on your the core lift you're trying to get stronger at and just focus on the one that will improve it the most. And I did this once, right? I was, of course, when we were kids, the lift was the bench press. There was nobody. Yeah, that was the you. golden standard. Everybody wanted to know how much you bench. Yeah, nobody cared about anything else, right? And yeah. I remember uh, trying to get past a certain milestone. I don't remember what it was. I think I was trying to get past six hundred pounds on the bench press. Just kidding. Uh, but, uh, but I was trying to get. <laughs> no, past no one even believed you. Crickets. Hey, you guys didn't even laugh. You guys took me seriously there. But you, uh, you went way too. Exaggerated. Yeah, you should have been like kind of exaggerated. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that extreme. Like four fifty or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, that sounds a little, that's a pretty big exaggeration. Yeah, I, don't I don't believe you, but maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, all joking aside, I remember I was I don't remember what the number was. I was stuck at a number and um, I had a, <laughs> I had um, a friend of mine say, if you get your overhead press to go up by 15 pounds, you'll add like five to 10 pounds on your bench press. So what I did with the bench Smart press is friend. I just, I kind of just trained it normally and reduced the intensity and then just tried to get stronger on the overhead press. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, 15 pound increase on the overhead press. And I had a five to 10 pound increase on my bench press. Yeah. A little twist to that. So I noticed that, but it wasn't until I switched and this was actually not, not that long ago. Um, and it was from lifting with Justin, which was doing a shoulder press, like full range of motion for the longest time. I did like bodybuilder shoulder presses, right. Oh, yeah. like, like with full extension over and, and just coming down to yeah. 90. Oh, so yeah, and I, I really down. feel like the the full range of motion shoulder press that I started doing later in my career is what helped me dig out of that totally. hole when you're you're benching yeah. where I and not, and not that getting strong like I could do over two twenty five on like a shoulder press where I'm like military style yeah. or just coming down to ninety degrees and I didn't feel that much of a carryover into my bench where doing even less weight than that full range of motion uh sta standing press or even seated that's a great point made yeah. a huge difference on the bench press so that's i think point. i think that that matters too right so if you're talking about a point like yep. that just getting strong shoulders or getting yeah. it strong with the shoulder press if you're doing it like bodybuilder style where you you stop at 90 degrees 
less value there as to somebody who's doing a well, four. Well, you inch. address sticking points that way too, especially yeah, if you get that four range of motion, then also like increasing stability of of the shoulder joint in general, like holding it overhead as well in that locked out position too. So you know that all contributes and translates really well to benching. Yep. Uh, so you feel like you can generate more force that way because it's secure. Yeah, it's really interesting too because getting a bigger bench press doesn't necessarily contribute to a better overhead press. True. But a better overhead press, the way that we're describing it, right? Full range of motion all the way down, all the way up. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio. So you're not going to add for every pound on the overhead press, you're going to add to the bench press. But it's like 50%, I would say. You know, you add 20 pounds in your overhead press, you'll probably see about a 10-pound increase. And so when you're stuck and you're trying so hard to get your bench press to go up and you're trying everything and it's just not working, a great strategy is to back off on mm -hmm. the bench press a little bit and say, all right, let me see how much stronger I can get on my overhead press. And then you go back and revisit your bench and almost always you're stronger in the bench press. And there's other exercise combinations that are like this as well. Like I noticed with the deadlift, if my squat went up, my deadlift usually would go up as well. Not the other way around though. If my deadlift went up, I didn't always see an increase in my squat. So it's just one of those cool yeah. you know, tricks that you can kind of learn to get past certain sticking points, you know? It's yeah, a lot plateau of fun. busters. Totally, yeah. totally. Did you guys get a chance to watch the Shapiro and Bill Maher conversation? All people talk about is politics all the time. What is Facebook? It's arguing with some kid you went to high school with. You were in chem lab together, and now you have to talk about who's on the Supreme Court? And that's, I think, what is tearing America apart. I saw a clip. It was good. It, it, I didn't. So you saw the whole thing? Uh, I'm like 90%. I think there's like less than 10 minutes left. Really good conversation. Yeah, huh. I think that that, first off, I want to, uh, Bill Maher, yeah. um, I appreciate, and I don't agree with his uh, positions or opinions often, but I like him because he's consistent. He's principled. And I've watched yeah. the guy since he was on uh, his, since he first got kicked off. Remember that show he had? I think it was called Politically Incorrect. Politically he got incorrect. kicked off. Yeah. Um, but he's very consistent in the fact that he went on with, Shapiro, someone who's literally on the opposite end of the political spectrum, oh, yeah. to have a conversation. That's and great. he's had he's had Shapiro on his show several times, and and typically when they have Shapiro on, you know, you get poor Shapiro, right? He goes in there and it's like three three liberals yeah. versus Shapiro, and and Shapiro has to like basically defend himself on his show with his audience, which by the way makes a huge difference for Bill Maher, like because he's a comedian, right? Well, he so, feeds off everybody. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it, I've watched inter like over COVID, I watched some of his interviews, and it just doesn't have the same punch when you don't have your biased audience who's yeah. like he's like waiting he, for like laughs yeah the celebration every time so yeah. but uh so it was really cool to see him come on that show uh, obviously if you know who those two guys are they they couldn't be further from each other as far as their 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 political views um but really interesting to see two guys who you would consider you know pretty hard left pretty hard right yeah. uh, how much they agree on I mean, yeah. that's just, that just shows you what interesting- We need a lot more of those conversations. Well, Bill Maher is no longer considered, this is the weird thing now, he's no longer considered pretty far left. See, that's bullshit to me. He's he's 65 years old, 40-something years, he would be considered a very left- You're right. He guy. Very so much you is. can't just, just change somebody like that. It's no. all these new uh, terms and things where the left is just completely like, it, it, it's just like recreated itself as something that I is unrecognizable. Well, okay, so here's another example. That's right, because his this is okay. So Bill Maher's positions have been very consistent, very consistent for decades. Yeah, he's very principled. There's another person on the left who's like that as well, Russell Brand. If you watch Russell Brand I, and you watch his, he's yeah, also he's too. very consistent. Now something has happened over the last few few years, and in particular, it was their stances on COVID. Bill Maher and Russell Brand both were critical of some of the policies and how things are being applied and maybe we're overreacting or whatever. And both became enemies of he talks about this that. mainstream thing that's going on. He, it's really he, weird. He brought it up. In fact, it actually went down a, a kind of our pathway of like the uh, obesity epidemic. Yeah. You know, and he says, you know, it's just, he goes, it's so strange to me that um, <clears throat> I can't say that. You know, if, you know, 70, it was like 79% of of all deaths a deaths were obese mm. and he goes you know to to not be able to have that conversation is just is he says is weird to me yeah he goes i'm not i'm not fat shaming anybody but to not be able to talk about that i feel like that's really 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 silly so they they went into they got into covid they got into a few other things that um, well when you when you combine uh bill maher uh joe rogan 
Russell Brand, who all have historically voted uh, Democrat, have considered themselves left uh, or liberal in a lot of their policies. Those three people now are being labeled as, I'm not making this up, alt-right. <laughs> so there's this really weird thing going on right now where there's this mainstream narrative, and if you don't go along with it, then they do this coordinated attack towards you. So we saw it happen to Rogan. Rogan untouchable. So yeah, he's got he's got an audience. Extremism. That's, yeah, good luck with going fucking with Rogan. It didn't work. Uh, Bill Maher, they've tried to go after him before. They're going to do it again. They still are. Russell Brand now is being attacked. It's very strange. It's really, really weird. And it got it really got ratched, uh, ratcheted up the last couple years so i feel like this strange that, that movement's gonna lose momentum though i just when you have two guys like that that have th this massive of platforms with different ideologies coming together and having conversations mm -hmm. i mean if you look at it, it it was only like four days ago i think when it when it went live and it's got like twelve thousand comments over a million yeah. views already you know, fuck television yeah. and the newspaper and shit. That's like all that BS that's being controlled right now. You can't stop that. No, you, can't you can't stop two two people like that having a great conversation nope. and disagreeing on several things and listening to them work it out. I yeah. think it was just it's a Old I media highly is recommend dying. It's it, dying. It, 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 what it's so obvious, yes. man. And, and there's so many new platforms emerging right now. I was listening to a few. Uh, apps that are coming out that are really trying to decentralize all this stuff and get rid of all the spyware, all this nonsense that's really, you know, one of major culprits in in dividing people and in, in creating extremism. Yeah, I remember, so I remember years ago when the internet really started to get popular and you started to see more and more people communicating on there. I had a client who was a very intelligent uh, woman. She was an executive, very well read. I've talked about her before. She uh, could debate both sides of issues really well. And she's the one that taught me how to do that properly. And, you know, so I learned a lot from her. And one thing she commented on the internet back then, which really struck me is she said, you know, it's, she said, be ready for tumultuous times. And I remember being like, what do you mean? The internet's great. It's, it's, you know, information It's decentralized. It can be wonderful. She goes, the last time something this big happened to humanity was the, the printing press, the, the Gutenberg printing press, mm -hmm allowed the average person to have access to written information, to real information. And before that, a lot of people don't know this, right? Before that, a book was so expensive that the only people that could have, because it had to be written by hand. They were copied and written by hand. The only people that had books were nobles or the, the church. Priests, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so the way you got your information is you went to the nobles or the church and they told you what to believe or what the information was. Then you had the printing press, which allowed books to be created cheaply. All of a sudden, literacy went through the roof. Everybody started reading. Mm -hmm. And the most popular book initially was the Bible, obviously. But the second most popular book, a lot of people don't know this, was Marco Polo's Travels, right? So Marco Polo wrote about traveling all over the world. It kind of opened people's eyes to different cultures and different... And what that did is it ushered in this very tumultuous era where you had wars and fighting over information throwing people in jail who were going counter to, you know, what the, the the mainstream orthodoxy was at the time. And she said, we're going to see that with the internet because old media mm -hmm. is, is, is going to, is going to fight tooth and nail when all this decentral, because you know what it was back in the well, day? They're playing daddy. They're the ones that are with like thinking that um, basically if, Whatever your idea is, it's it's not good if it goes against our ideas. Yes. And so it's like, it's the same exact thing that we went through with the church and separating ourselves from that in that, you know, like, so Galileo, for instance, yeah. or Copernicus, right? Coming up with the fact that we're not the center of the universe. Like the earth is not the center of the universe. They didn't know that until, you know, we let... And, and were, was basically like ostracized, you, you know, house them, arrest, I think for the rest of his life. Yeah. And it, and so it's like, we're going through that same process right now is my point of the, with, with censorship. It's like, if, if, you know, you say something that's like contradictory to whatever the, the narrative is, is right now, like all these major dude, companies working together can just stuff you out. Dude, think of it this way. When we were kids, if you wanted to film something and then get it to, I don't know, hundreds of thousands or millions of people to watch, you had to be a journalist and you had to have access to one of very few media channels, which were controlled by corporate interests and you know the editors and whatever. Today, uh, anybody with a phone 
can record something, post it, and it could go viral before they block it, before they even figure out what the hell happened. That is insane. And the first time that we saw like what the effects of something like this could do uh, was the Vietnam War. You know, a lot of people, don't, if, you, if you look at the Vietnam War before that, Every war was like, most people were like, let's do this. Vietnam happened. You had journalists in there filming shit. People saw the real horrors of war. Obviously, nothing's uh, perfect. It's terrible, whatever. So you had these crazy protests that happened. It caused lots and lots of issues. Yeah. Um, and now it's like multiply that times a million because information is so decentralized. I think it comes with its own challenges. Yeah. But yeah, the old, and, and by the way, uh, speaking of, of wars and stuff, uh, Vietnam was what the way that they got our support for that was false. The Gulf of Tonkin incident, look it up. It's that was that was fake. We all know that it's admitted fake. Uh, Iraq was fake. Weapons of mass destruction never found them, right? But mm -hmm. it got public support. So people are much more suspicious. Uh, but but they still try to get this narrative, and it's really crazy. And it's crazy to, to watch Russell Brand, Bill Maher, Joe Rogan get labeled so strangely it's yeah. very very interesting mislabeled it's really Purposely. strange yeah yeah and, and, to and sway your opinion and all three of those people were very critical of the the narrative around uh, the pandemic which we know this <clears throat> during that during that time when it was all but which uh, ended of course like six weeks ago all of a sudden pff, nobody cares anymore but up until about six weeks ago or eight weeks ago or so if you said the wrong thing you were gone and i don't mean like you said something really bad. I mean, if you said something like, hey, you know, uh, we don't know long-term safety of uh, vaccines, which is true. Or you said something like, you know, I don't know if it's a good idea that we force kids to wear masks or what. Oh my God, you were, you were booted, especially if you had some kind of a following. Yeah. Really weird, really, really strange times. So, but I'm glad that he got on with, uh, with Shapiro. Yeah, because. no, I, I highly recommend that to, uh, any, whether you're left or right. I just think that it, it's really great to hear, uh, you know, two people like that, both intelligent, um, yeah. having an intelligent conversation on uh, topics that are a little like third rail stuff uh, that they disagree and then listening to them have it go back and forth. I thought it was really, really, really interesting. You know, to the point you're bringing up too about like history and stuff, uh, I, I sent over a clip. It was just a short, a short 50 minute clip on Ray Dalio's new book. If you mm. guys haven't watched that, you should really watch that. It's the, the changing, the new, the changing new world order or something like that. Um, phenomenal book. Um, and if you, if, if you want to get an idea of what he covers in the book, he, uh, he, on his YouTube channel, if you Google Ray Dalio, um, it's like his main, um, what do you call that? What's that called? Andrew, like the front, the first video you see on our, video. the what? Welcome video. Yeah, like the welcome video for okay. YouTube. It's right now his kind of like fifty minute uh, synopsis of his book, and it's it's all edited really cool. So it's actually really entertaining to watch, but it's it's a brilliant read, and and I think it's yeah. something that everybody should read with what's going on now. What, what a different world our kids are going <coughs> to are growing up oh. in, huh? Well, yeah. I think that's actually the point of that is that it really isn't. It's, it's there's new technologies and but. There's a lot of what we're we're feeling and going through historically has kind of happened before, just in different ways. You know, mm -hmm. it's just it's kind of what well, what, human behavior cyclical. never changes. Yeah, yeah, we're the same. Yeah, it, which is funny. Like uh, I love it when people look back a hundred years and be like, people were so terrible back then. Human behavior is the same. We we evolve with our ideas. That's right. And but, technologies change and things like that. Yeah, but. dude. But you put people in a corner or you take away their food or their safety and watch how they act. Woo. Beha human behavior can be very, very interesting. Well, I was going to transition to brilliant ideas, but uh, did you guys see Mike Tyson's uh, latest uh, venture? You know how he's in the weed business, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that successful, by the way? Is his weed? I business? believe so. Yeah, I believe he does pretty well with it. Hard not to. Be he successful. came out with uh, some gummies that were shaped like ears. Oh shit! <laughs> no, he did not. <laughs> yeah. No, dude. he didn't. Pull it up, Doug. I want to see <laughs> like this. Poor Vander Holyfield. Really? You know? Yeah, dude. Like. So the, I don't it's know if they're CBD brilliant, gummies actually. exactly, or or they're actual like uh, THC gummies, but um, I just thought that was like so. Brilliant did he to, really? To, to mark How that. did I not hear this? This is hilarious. Yeah, I think it just came out like what a, a brilliant days ago. idea. Yeah, that's a hundred percent what I yeah, would have done. That is so good. Yeah. Is he? Is there anybody more terrifying than Mike Tyson in a fight? I can't. No. I can't think of anybody. Yeah, that I would. I'm still shocked at the when we talked to Tony, and I think that was off air. Did we talk about that off air? Was it not on air when I was asking him about? Oh, they're uh, weed gummies. Yeah. So, so the, oh, okay. Oh, so they're not just gummies, but they're weed gummies. 
<laughs> that oh is God, so dude. great. <laughs> That's yeah. hilarious. I can't believe I haven't seen this yet. That's yeah. hilarious, dude. I love it. That's yeah. so. You, you, you don't remember, put a Vander on the cover, but you know. <clears throat> remember, remember when we uh, we talked to Tony off? I think it was off air. I don't think it made it in the interview when we were asking him about. You know, uh, I asked him about because he's been around so many amazing people. Like yeah. who impressed him the most, or what? That Mike Tyson. Yeah, like, I would not. That that man has interviewed so many, so many brilliant, amazing people, and for him to say that uh, that Mike Tyson was apparently he's a really deep thinker and, and very well read. He said yeah, too, well read. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've heard him say some stuff that makes you go, "Holy shit, this guy's really smart." But yeah. also, but then he also says really crazy shit. Yeah, dude. Uh, do you, who was it that he was yelling at? That really, there was like a it was like pre fight hype, or maybe it was eating after his fight. kids. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm eat, gonna your eat your kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. <laughs> Wow, yeah, who bro. Who says that, dude? Yeah. That's some terrifying yeah. shit, dude. I mean, it's, it's, I think it, I mean, now you see all of these fighters try and, you know, emulate that kind of crazy. But he, I mean, obviously, Muhammad Ali was probably the first to like really, you know, he was bring the, the shit talk. You know, he like, he's wrote the, the book on it. Yeah, he wrote yeah. the book on it, but he was more elegant about it. I think Mike Tyson took that. With and it, his own, I don't know if Mike Tyson <laughs> planned it. I think he really is like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't well, know if that was part of his act. Or I mean, I, I, you're right. I don't know for sure either. I don't think I, he was, I, like, he, he was trying to scare him, and that just. I'm came pretty out, sure you know? Don King was probably uh, encouraging. Tell it. him you're going to eat his kids. Yeah, yeah. I would. <laughs> I don't know if he, he told him to say that, but I'm sure that he was he was encouraging him to to be that guy. So I don't know if this is true, but I used to train this old boxer. He was 77 years old. He used to manage boxers, and he would tell me about all these stories of boxing back in the day. He was like a total historian. I love talking to this guy. He's the guy I told you guys about at 75. He, he hit me in the head once with his hand, just kind of messing around. And I realized this 75 year old could probably still knock me out by yeah. how heavy his hand. Anyway, mm. oh, yeah. he told me about, uh, he was talking about the evolution of the shit talking in boxing. Yeah. yeah. And he brought up uh, Muhammad Ali. He said that before that boxers were very professional and they went to the press conference and yeah, it's going to be a good fight. I'm a whatever. Yeah. And Muhammad Ali was going to fight Sonny Liston. Mm -hmm. And Sonny Liston was this terrifying ex-felon who used to fuck, like really fuck people up. Like heavy hitter, strong as hell. Here comes Muhammad Ali, who at the time, you know, he changed his name to Muhammad Ali, was Cassius Clay. Sonny Liston kept referring him to as Cassius, which pissed him off. Of course. And I guess Muhammad Ali's strategy was to act crazy and make poems you know he got famous for for doing that right and i guess that was it was a planned strategy because he said that uh people like sunny liston the only thing that scares them is crazy people the unpredictable yeah, side like, of it like yeah. felons are not scared like you could be aggressive well, they're not scared of that but they're scared when they realize you're unpredictable and you're crazy yeah, so that, that was part sense. of his strategy uh, which is brilliant. I couldn't imagine what Tyson would have done with Muhammad Ali's mind. Well, what's your guys' thought? Yeah. What What is your thought on like the whole shit talking thing with the fighters? You like it, or you feel like only if they can back it up? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, like if it if they if they talk shit, if they, there's a way to do it where it's like I think it's fun and it like it it, it pulls people in versus it being just like you know, mean spirited and just like yeah. really dark you know i've I, seen both i respect it because i see the marketing value yeah so i could see that do i like it no that's because i i grew up a martial artist so i have respect like i was brought up in the martial art world where you have this like respect so Lyoto machida was somebody that i really liked watching right. oh yeah he's just he, no no yeah all business he, he exemplified george st pierre that. was like that george st pierre was like that too yeah. he was a martial artist where it was very like you know, like the honor of the battle right. type of deal. Yeah. So I, I that. like that better, but I respect the shit talk. I mean, I, the game, so right? I'm kind of in the middle, right? I really like it when it feels authentic. Like Conor McGregor to me feels authentic. Like that is, yeah. We, yeah. but then you have like it, because that's a proven formula, everybody tries to kind of do it now. If you want to be like the next. Yeah. The well, next, Cause you're trying to get more ticket sales. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, it is totally a formula that people are trying to generate, but it, it doesn't work for everybody. You know, and, and most fires, they're they're not good at it. Do you see? Did you see the what the sixty million dollar offer for uh, Kanye West versus Pete Davidson? Oh my! Shut up, Jake Paul. I tell you what, Jake the, the Paul brothers do. Of course, Jake Paul's on this. Jake Paul offered so that he, would be the greatest poll ever. <laughs> offered sixty million dollars to Kanye West, and now you know Kanye West shits that kind of money. So it's yeah, yeah. you know, I mean, he's he's got 
be on. Yeah, but you know he's got to be right, like. Let's speculate this because Pete Davidson, he's got to have reach on him, right? Isn't he taller? Than yeah, him? he's definitely. He doesn't taller. look very healthy though, does he? No, he looks like he, no, he looks he's like lacking. A zombie. Yeah, I don't think Kanye. Kanye's not like a fighter type at all. He doesn't strike he's me. A, yeah, it he isn't. doesn't strike me as someone that. Did would you even. see? Have, did you? And see that's still, and for him, that's not like for Pete Davidson. That's that's like change your life type money. But for Kanye West, like I mean, he's. Did you see the the text thread between the two of them? That I guess it went it went viral or whatever. Uh. Uh-uh. So he's like, Pete Davidson's like, uh, you know, you got to be more mature. You, uh, you know, I'm not going to take it anymore when you keep talking shit about me or whatever. And Kanye's like, you know where to find me, you know, Sunday service or whatever. He's like, why can't we just, you know, meet at my room, talk man to man. And he's like, meet me at Sunday service. And then he goes, where are you right now to Pete Davidson? And he's like, in bed with your wife, takes a picture of himself. <laughs> Oh, he did not. Yeah, dude. Wow. Yeah, dude. Wow. Well, yeah. dude, I mean, like, leave the guy alone. I don't know, man. At this point, let it go, right? Like, I, I don't know. Part of me, look, the, the I guess, mature side of me is yes. Now, just, just pause for a second, Justin. Let's just say you and your wife. You got kids, man. Kids are involved. Bro, imagine you I and- I get it, dude. Imagine you and a wife got separated. And now she's hooking up with Pete the, Davidson. Pete bro. Davidson I guess is around ma- your kids, bro. Yeah. I guess it all matters uh, <clears throat> like how that all happened. I don't know the story of like, you know, their rocky relationship yeah. that led to have her go seek out Pete, right? So if he's the one, like if, if it, it all depends, like if he swooped in like and just you know, sort of like uh, wooed her uh, and, and was able to kind of t- like pull her away and like home wrecked it, yeah. then sure, you know, game on. But So uh, according to Ben Stiller, like it, Pete Davidson is supposed to be like this great guy. He's He was, I saw an interview of Stiller like talking about him and he supposedly they're really good friends and he knows him really well and he like spoke really highly of him. Huh. Just that he's just this really like big. He sweet- might be. I mean, I yeah, mean, we're judging him right now. Right. I don't know the he's, guy. And he and he what he says is that his he's very, very dedicated to his craft and he believes that he's going to go on to do incredible things. And um, what's the what's the show? Is he Saturday Night Live? Yeah, he's, on Live yeah, he's, he's just on. he's talking about how he's he's been doing that for so long yeah. and his his character on there. Like he's he's really found a way to monetize his personality. And he says he's extremely talented. And he's got a huge heart. He went on. He went might on. be. I mean, we're judging. Went on, him. Went on one and talk about yeah, how, how I don't, I don't know the guy. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm just saying if I saw the guy drop my kids off at school. <laughs> I mean, Doug, I will you pull it, up dude, Pete Davidson's but... net worth? I'm just curious on where he's at. I'm like, more like if he did him dirty, thing. I feel like that's going to add more salt and you're going to keep pressing. But, yeah. Uh, if not, and it's just like she was already on, on her way out. Like, Peace out. You move I, on. I know. Is not is that like the first white dude she's been with for a long time? Oh, I don't know. I think so, right? I'm so bad with like the whole like People magazine and yeah. who's, who's sleeping with well, who. And <laughs> Katrina makes fun of me all the time as I'll say something. She's like, he I mean, they have not been married for like 30 years. They've dated like three other people. His since. net worth is roughly $6 million. Oh, he's Okay, so real get, take this out. He's punching up, isn't you he? Guys have a, you guys have a guess on oh, yeah. Kanye? Kanye's net His worth? His net worth? Yeah. Oh, hundreds of millions. I don't know how much. Yeah. Wait, don't do it. Don't show it, Doug. I know Let what me, it is. I want to say let's it's say more like 700 kind of range. Oh, no, no way. That much? I don't, dude. I mean, I'd say 300 million. Okay, you're neither one are right, but Justin's closer than you. Fuck, really? Yeah, no, he's, bro, he's, he's up there, dude. I didn't realize that he's more than Jay Z, bro. He's a one, like 1. 1.8 billion. He's a billionaire? That's bro, what I, okay. he's almost a multi billionaire. Holy shit. I had no idea. Yeah, he's got fuck you. See, fuck Dr. You money. Dre was like, he he became billion. Look at once that. He sold one point eight billion. And I didn't. Jay Z followed up. Right. That's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I, so that for 60, some reason I thought Jay Z was sixty million worth dollar fight is like. Well, I mean, no, you wouldn't even consider it. Just his shoes line, right? He made a ton. That's of you know what? You're right. I didn't consider of, all of it. I mean, yeah, but all those guys have tons. I mean, I didn't. I didn't know that. Like, I didn't know it was that much. I wouldn't. Yeah, no, that's, I, yeah, I didn't. That's impressive, dude. Man. That's, that's big time. Yeah, that that is big eight, time. bro. He's on his way to two billion, dude. Wow, that's insane. Yeah, so somebody offers you sixty million. I believe that's thirty million each. I mean, he's I'm, he's not even paying attention. That's, to that. that's that's the change in his couch. Yeah, yeah. yeah you lift the cushions. Oh, there's yeah. thir- there's there's thirty million. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I guess in. they should fight it out, right? At this point, like, yeah. like set it up, Jake Paul. Let's go. I think uh, Pete Davidson might be way bigger than him, isn't he? Let's see the heights, Doug. Let's check it. Yeah, be, I think you're I mean, right. He's tall. Yeah, he's got to settle the score. Here. He's tall and lanky. I don't know. Yay's a little street. Maybe he's got that to, yeah. to his. Is it MMA or just boxing? 
Yeah, I don't know. That's a good. I feel like if Kanye gets a hold of him, you know what I mean. I think they said boxing. I think it was boxing is what they were trying to set (laughs) up. I think boxing at least limits it down. Oh, dude! uh, I tell you, dude, it's if he could grab him and hold him down. If he knew a little jujitsu, you could embarrass somebody really bad. Sure. You guys ever watched the fight back in the day of uh, Randy Couture versus Tito Ortiz? Oh, I didn't watch that one. Is that where he spanked him? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. Because he and hey, listen, if you know how to grapple really well. You can hold someone down in a position where yeah, they don't, they can't do anything, the and then you can just embarrass them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can just, oh, you know, that's messed up. Yeah. Like, like, stop yeah. pinning yourself. You know? That has yeah. to go down as like one of the like most that's embarrassing. Because yeah, he had him pinned in the corner and he yeah. couldn't move, and then you just slapping him in the ass. Like, that's wow. embarrassing. Bro. That's such a good <laughs> yeah. Couture was doing that to him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, because I, I've unfortunately, I love Couture. He's, He's my, like favorite. One of my favorite. Yeah, it, but then when he went out to that front kick to the face, I was like, no. Oh. Well, I mean, everybody's that going to kill me. At some point, that's yeah. what happens. All, yeah, all it all happens. Your hero. So Kanye drops. is 5'9". I believe it was 163. Oh, my God. Pete Davidson, though, he's 6'3". Oh, yeah. But he said he weighs about 140 pounds. I don't know if this is true or not. But yeah, he's skinny. Wow, he's very skinny thin bones. guy. But 6'3 on 5'9". That's not even yeah, fair. Yeah, Con- Connie's going to have to do He's got a good jab. He's got... Uh, yeah, if it was MMA, he has a, ch- a chance, but a bo- boxing is not even fair. No, he's not going to be able to touch him. Yeah, boxing is not even fair. Yeah. That's, yeah, it's Holy like, cow. Yeah. 100 and how many? 140 pounds? Yeah, it says 75 kilograms. That was me in high, high school. So high school, I graduated at 145 and 6'3". Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. I was rails, dude. Yeah, yeah. Rails. <laughs> yeah. Hey, when you took a shower, you had to move around and get wet? Or so, I, you mean, I <laughs> I used to, I wish I could find this picture. I had this picture and I used it when I was a trainer. It was like my sales pitch because I wasn't that big. I was like 180 when I became, when I was a trainer after a few years. But I used to use that as like my transformation picture of like, this is what I used to look well, like. That's a 40 pound difference. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I didn't look that impressive to somebody at, you know, when I was 21, 22. But if you compared it to what I looked like at yeah. 17 or whatever, it yeah. was like a big difference. And I had this picture of me in Hawaii and I was, I was drying off with a towel. Obviously I had no shirt on. Right. And you could like see every rib, you know, uh, you yeah. see my entire rib cage. I was so skinny, oh, dude. <laughs> and healthy, I was working though. out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That was on the bulk. Yeah. Yeah. Enough, yeah. Huh? yeah. 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 That was yeah. me bulking. Right dude. There. I gotta, I gotta ask you guys what your experience, have you guys been using seed again, right? Since we started working. Yeah. Out? Yeah. That yeah. it, there is no probiotic that comes close at yeah. all. So you at can all. tell a difference. I have to Huge be honest. Difference. Like it's so hard for me to tell a difference with things like that. Like, all right, I mean, how do I you, can tell it's consistent because I have gut. Me, I get yeah. my gut it could you know could go one way or another. Right. I know. I know you're you're way more. Intuitive Seed with that. is there is no probiotic that comes. I mean, probiotics sometimes will help me. Sometimes I don't notice too much. Seed is like. Big time difference. Do you purely think that's because of the delivery system? Yes. Because you get so much more of yes. it? Yes. Because that was that was the thing that I thought was really interesting when we first learned about that company was that even the some of the best probiotics out there, much of it you're you're not absorbing. It's lost, yeah. Well, so um, according to Dr. Ruscio, even dead probiotics will elicit a benefit uh, in the gut. So any probiotic should have some kind of a benefit, but seed is different in that it, the way that they designed the capsule is to survive the digestive tract and deliver the the probiotics to the colon, I believe. And the way that they test this is they have this big machine that they'll put the, that simulates the the gut and the digestive tract to show that this makes it all the way through. Anyway, it, there's it's like everything else feels like nothing compared to this in terms of the effects. It's it's a whole nother universe. So if anyone's watching, you've tried probiotics before and, and you like them. It's it's a whole different experience. It's like I can totally tell the big difference when I well, take. Well, everything's it. just so much better when your gut's right, uh, and that's just something you yeah. know. I've I've definitely been going through the ringer with that as of late. Just now coming on the other side, uh, but it's just like you, you feel drops of performance. You feel your sleep get affected. You feel all kinds of uh, issues as a result of not having your gut be uh, as it should. Yep. They have to be one of the only companies I know that just purely do a pro- probiotic. Like normally when you see probiotics, it's like part of a supplement line. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's like a good point. When you see a company that that has a probiotic. Their expertise is all there, isn't it? Uh, all there. Yeah. Yeah. That's all they do Centers is is that. probiotic. That's it. And you normally see like that's a, I mean, some of the best probiotics out there are a part of a supplement line that they do all kinds of different supplements. So to see, to see that is really interesting, which I know they've put a ton of 
of money and research yeah, into that's it. Yeah, cool. So. You know what else is getting me kind of uh, excited is uh, my, so my so you guys know this. My son's just started working. Oh yeah, how did yesterday go? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So I, 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 I yeah. fist pumped him on the did way. You? I'm like, hey, were yeah. you going to work? <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So I, I don't. I, I'm I'm obviously I'm told him I'm not your boss when you uh, here at work. You go you work the directly. Adam is you, 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 don't, directly right. under Andrew. Don't <laughs> listen to anybody, especially Adam. No, I said you know Andrew's in, in charge. King. Do what he tells you and you know do a good job. And so uh, hopefully he does. He's a hardworking kid, smart kid. So I think he will but we'll see but it's funny because uh, i know justin told me that he told him to because he's in training right now and he goes watch us and then figure out how to roast us and I'm yeah like, dude he's gonna roast me the most oh i can't wait for sure i hope yeah. so for sure it's a great way to get <laughs> behind the scene cash tips it's gonna hey, it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's gonna be Capture hilarious all south faces you know like i'm gonna be like frame. yeah you're, you're yeah. grounded you know next day at work you know of the edited video holy shit what happened to my face yeah <laughs> I it's can't wait. Fun, I can't. I can't wait to hear uh, his experience and what. I can't wait to hear Andrew. I haven't got a chance to talk to Andrew about how the process is going because this is now what a second or third day he's been training. I think so. Is that right, Andrew? Second or third, a couple days, days. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's cool. Um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But it's uh, it, it, he. He was excited because I think this is kind of along the lines of what he may want to do in the future. Yeah. Cause yeah, he's dude. got uh, artistic, some artistic talent and some tech, uh, yeah. of course. Experience. Yeah. I've seen some of his drawings. So he's still, yeah, very, I don't know where he got that from, by the yeah. way. He didn't get it from me. I was going to say, yeah, bro. I can't even draw a square. I don't know how he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's so hard. Right. That's why I'm trying to talk. I, I am the worst. You guys ever play Pictionary with me? Uh, forget oh. it. You know, it's what you have day in the I life. Not. You have day in the life. And, and I always forget to tease you about this because people always say, you always use the uh, the default the purple yes the yeah. default purple, purple colors text, text. it's yeah. <laughs> it's no, zero time guy. put into like the creativity it's the content, or the, bro. Yeah, it's yeah. all the content <laughs> that's why I got all the views or make sure you put all your food dude because that's like I always forget to to like do the whole thing with oh my, speaking of food you guys uh, tell me about this lasagna you had that you were bragging oh, about yeah, Katrina gets mad at me because I call it a lasagna it's technically not a lasagna but I'm actually what is I, it then hold on that's on my. No, I had a, a list. I had actually. Uh, it's not a lasagna. No, no. So the I knew that the next time we had a butcher box commercial, I wanted to t- I wanted to talk version. about it because we use we use all butcher box meat in it, and it's. it's all, I don't know. I call it a lasagna. I'm like, what are you? Well, listen. Is I'm gonna t- okay. Uh, <laughs> so we use the butcher box uh, butcher box cheese. ground beef. We use the butcher box uh, sweet Italian ground sausage. So if you guys haven't ordered that in there, oh, yeah. that's amazing. I thought you were I've calling me. That's the nickname you call me. Um, <laughs> saute mushrooms. Yeah. Half a small onion and garlic cute. one box of quinoa pasta one jar of traditional spaghetti sauce one cup mozzarella one cup parmesan and then we just basically cook it in a you know we you bake, bake it, it yeah we bake it at 375 until the cheese is like golden brown and that's a what I, are the macros on that you know yeah uh, you know i haven't broke the macros down on it but i mean it's uh and it there's it's i'm pretty heavy on the cheese you could totally if you wanted to make it like a light dish you could cut the cheese in half but i like it all cheese well, mm-hmm. yeah no i agree justin i yeah. think that more cheese. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it, we make it so meat heavy. It's a very high protein meal. And the pasta is. It looks just, really good. It's bomb. Yeah. It looks really yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, it's like, so we, it's the it's like a rigatoni. Is that like a different, uh, dish yeah. That's similar to that? Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is different. Yeah. So you, I know you, things. You put, <laughs> <laughs> Justin knows a lot. Yeah. Yes. You, uh, so it's the, the, the sausage. Yeah. And what else? And the ground beef. And the ground beef. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. Oh, and it's, and it's mostly that. Like we do a lot of that. And then you just, and we do one box of the, and it makes a big Pyrex like this. I, hey, their sausage isn't bad. It's, it's really bomb. good. No, you know how hard it is to find good sausage. It's well, know. we've talked about there the the heritage I'll pork you, thing. I'll make a joke, Justin. You're, <laughs> are you trying so hard not to make it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it almost exploded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you need to try this. This it's is like this is right up sausage. your alley, dude. For, oh, it sounds uh, delicious. A uh, dish, it's delicious, man. And it's uh, pretty simple to it's make. Got your favorite ingredients, Justin: cheese, meat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, fuck. Yeah, yeah. that's all I need. You're ready dude. to go, dude. <laughs> no, they actually that. they have. Look, I'll tell you something out. No, all joking aside, try to hold it in, Justin. It is hard. To find good sausage, it is really, really hard. I swear to God. So, and and you know, my we you know that's a part of uh, I guess Italian cuisine or whatever. 
And you go to the grocery store and you buy all the different, they're disgusting. They're all, they all taste like breakfast sausages or something like that. Nobody knows how to do it right. Yeah. They do a good job. No, they do a phenomenal job. Yeah. So there you go. I cooked it. So if you saw it on my story, I think last week when I did the day in the life or whatever it was. on his sausage safari. <laughs> there's, there's, <laughs> the, there's the recipe. <laughs> I mean, I just picture like. the best sausages. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I picture like I'm into one of those like yeah. Yeah. open like, air. <laughs> he's like Columbus, just, you know, like yeah. sailing. Is that too much? Sausage. Is that too much? If I send you that recipe, is that too much for you to put it in the show notes, Andrew? Is that like overkill? Okay, well, I'll send it over to you then. Yeah, so you're set. I yeah. would love to see you guys trade hats real quick, just so we can see how big Justin's head is. Because I noticed the the buttons it's on the front big, of it, dude. Look at that. What are we yeah. talking about? Were you on like level three? I have, I have a big head, dude. Yeah. Yeah, I got a big ass brain in there. <laughs> dude, dude, I, have a, I, have a, I have a narrow head, so I definitely don't have. I, uh, that would be like a bucket on me for sure. <laughs> dude, yeah, no, yeah. no wonder this guy played football. You're killing people yeah, with that. Yeah. Yeah. Hit, you guys yeah. ever watch, watch uh, played Bonk's Adventure when you were kids? Yeah. Uh, you can look that up, Andrew. Put that up on the yeah. Bonk's Adventure. It's a video game about Justin. <laughs> Move your head. Hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the podcast. Look, uh, if you have a balanced, healthy life, that means you occasionally partake in drinking some alcohol. There's nothing wrong with alcohol when it's occasional and done properly. The only problem is if you're a workout fanatic, it almost always affects your workouts the day after. You just don't feel the same. Enter Zbiotics. This product is incredible. So here's how it works, right? It's a genetically modified probiotic drink designed to break down some of the negative byproducts of alcohol. And it works. It really, really works. I'm not making this up. So what you do is you drink Zbiotics, then you enjoy yourself with your friends, you drink your alcohol. The next day, you feel way, way better. This stuff is like magic. Give it a try. Head over to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Zbiotics. Use the code MINDPUMP22 for a discount. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Noah from Georgia. Noah, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, what's going on, guys? What's happening? Hey, so uh, my name's Noah. I am in the Army, and my question kind of revolved around getting prepped for Ranger School, which is coming up here in a few months. Um, I know you guys can see my question from before, but I'll just kind of recap it. I'm currently in an Army school um, through the middle of May, and I'll transition right into Ranger School. And so my biggest question was just preparing my body uh, and my mind for for that task. It's a physical and mental beatdown. Um, injury prevention is pretty important to me as that's the number one way people get recycled out of it, uh, as well as going in with a good base of strength. I have a background of athletics and like bodybuilding lifting. That's how I got into uh, exercise, but um, just recently started transitioning more to the strength world. So I just wanted your guys' opinion on the best way to prepare my body for that challenge. Yeah. So Noah, let me ask you a couple questions because I've trained um, a few people who were who were rangers in the past and also other elite uh, military service people. So like uh, Navy SEALs, for example. And um, the, the the two reasons why people tend to not pass is injury. And then the other part is the mental uh, aspect of it. They said, and this is what I heard from several people, I'd love your confirmation on this, that it's rarely the lack of physical fitness, but rather either injury or the mental aspect. Is mental that fortitude. is that true? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what that's what everybody that's been through it has said. Okay. So in in other words, usually just to get in there, you got to be pretty fit anyway. So what we want to focus on the mental aspect. That's something that um I think that's up to the individual. There's lots of stuff I guess you could prepare for that and some of that I think uh, is trained into you and others is just how you, how you view certain things. The other part is the injury prevention. And I would say your goal should be to, obviously you want to maintain your fitness, but your focus should be on being as healthy as possible going into it because they're going to overtrain you. They're going to push you to the limit. And what you want to when, kind of want to think about it this way, right? So let's say you have a bucket that represents your physical health. You want to, you want that bucket to be as full as possible because they're going to be pulling from that. What you don't want to do is train so hard that you go into ranger school and you're already, you know, got got a nagging knee injury, kind of feeling stiff, already kind of on the line of overtraining because you pushed yourself too hard. I feel like that would set you up for failure versus going in there fresh uh, with, you know, healthy joints uh, and good mobility. So, my focus would be on maintaining fitness, but going in and 
feeling as mobile and healthy as possible. Well, remind me what the what the test looks like, right? I know you have to ruck for a certain amount of distance. I know, and you have to do it on time. I know you have to swim. I know you have to do push ups. I know you have to climb over a wall. Like, it, what is the what's the test look like? Yeah. So to get in, they have what's called the Ranger Physical Assessment, and it's two minutes. You have to hit, I believe, it's fifty push ups, sixty sit ups. Um, six chin-ups, and then a five-mile run in under 40 minutes. Um, then there's a 12-mile ruck in less than three hours, so about a 15-minute pace. Um, there is kind of a swimming test. It's more of a just can you do it. It's not necessarily a tough thing. It's a more of a mental challenge. Uh, but then, yeah, once you're, once you're in the school, it's a lot of time on your feet, a lot of time taking a knee with a heavy ruck, um, so yeah, that's where a lot of the injuries come from is just that constant, constant load on the shoulders, on the back. Um, but yeah, those are the tests to get in. Yeah. So I think, I think my training would, would emulate that. Right. So I would probably, I, I wouldn't be training during the week, the, the full test, but I would break up parts of the test and, and be practicing that leading up to that. And I think that's probably going to condition you the best for when you get into ranger school and I'd be, I'd be very cautious on how much the other stuff, like I'm not going to be chasing squat and deadlift PRs. I'm not going to mm. be like getting bodybuilder bulky. I want to be lean and conditioned and able to do those things that you're going to have to be doing for your, your, your test. Yeah. Now I, I wouldn't be too lean by the way, Noah, you don't want to go no. into this shredded that actually, right, right. yeah, that could be detrimental. I would aim for like, I don't know, 13 to 15% body fat because uh, when you're in that school, you end up losing weight and you don't want to be too lean. Otherwise, uh, you don't have much of a buffer. Okay, so what's the timeline with this too? Because in terms of like Adam's advice, I would go in that direction, but more towards the end, uh, kind of leading up to that point where you're focused a little more on endurance. Because in the beginning, if you have time to really structure a good foundational strength emphasis uh, to get you strong and and then also simultaneously add, you know, mobility sessions in between something like a MAPS performance start where we kind of scale that in into uh, the season typically for athletes. This is something that I would, you know, probably focus a bit more on. So that way, you know, your, your, your joints are what you want to preserve. Your joints, you want to have a healthy going into that and be as, you know, top shape with that as possible because they are going to really grind you to pretty much smithereens. So. <laughs> so what's the time? So what's, what's the timeline? Yeah, what's the timeline look like? Yeah. So currently the school that I'm in, um, it's not quote unquote a ranger prep, but we do a lot of the tasks from ranger school. We also are spending a lot of time in the field. So that's been, the t I've been here since the first week of January and graduate the end of May. Um, that's been the toughest part of that is sometimes Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday, we're out in the field. Um, so once that school is complete, there is at minimum a two week uh, other school that I have to go to as a National Guard member to prepare myself for ranger school. And then once I'm in, it's a 62 day course. So that just depends on slots too. Like best case scenario, I'm in there the first week of June. Worst case scenario, I could be waiting around here until August, September, waiting for a slot. But right now shooting for that June timeline to get started. Yeah, I, I can't stress this enough. I would say mobility should be a focus. Big, big I, I, focus. I would bet I would bet your fitness now is probably good enough to pass uh, the physical test. Am, would, would, am I wrong or am I right? Yeah, yeah, I okay. feel like I'm in a pretty decent spot. Okay. Yeah. Room so to I, improve, but I, I won't fail those tests. Yeah, so I would maintain, and then I would focus on mobility so your joints are as healthy as possible. And I would go into it rested, healthy, feeling like you have some room to get broken down. Uh, so I, I would really focus on sleep. I would focus mm -hmm. on stress management. Like you want to go in as fresh as possible because they're going to be chipping away at you. So what does that look like training wise for him? Because what, what I'm trying to wrap my brain around, because I don't know if uh, Maintenance. The, fu the full blown performance would be ideal depending on what your days look like right now. Like wh what is out in the field look like? Is it pretty strenuous as it is? Because if you're doing a lot of physical stuff already, throwing maps performance uh, on top of that may be too much. Yeah. So I'd be concerned about what that, what is your, what does your week kind of look like? What is it when you go out in the field and you're training, what is it pretty taxing physically? What's it like? It is. Um, so once we, uh, once we're out there, it's pretty much a tactical environment where 
you're pulling security, running patrols, uh, which means you're moving a lot with a heavy ruck on and you're not sleeping pretty much hardly at all. Um, and that's, that's the majority of what the weekdays look like. We usually are back Thursday or Friday morning. Uh, but then the weekends are free and that's been my time to, uh, focus on recovery and getting good sleep and getting to the gym when I can. But yeah, field weeks, the PT and the gym aspect of it is just kind of non-existent because you just don't have time while you're out there uh, on top of all the other stuff that's going on. So that's been, that's been the struggle. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't add anything except mobility work. Are, yeah. are you, you said the weekends are for you to rest and recover. Does it feel like you need that? Like you get to the weekend, you're like, man, I need to some, get some rest. For sure. That Friday night, I feel like I got hit by a bus and then depending on the sleep that I get that night, feel good going into the weekend. But yeah, just, the, those long weeks in the field with little sleep, they're taxing for sure. Yeah, dude, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, mobility is all I would add and, yeah. and recovery type stuff. I wouldn't add anything to improve. Keep fueling your body, you know, in terms of nutrition as well. Yeah, I wouldn't try to add anything to improve physical performance because you're already on the line. And if you go into ranger school already almost over the line of overtraining, or overdoing it, it's going to be real rough. Uh, so I would, I would just focus all your energy on recovery, mobility, sleep, mm -hmm. stress management. That's what I would focus on because your fitness is already there. You can already pass the fitness test. So it's not like you right. need to improve anything. All you're trying to do is maintain. And that's very different, right? To the intensity required for me to build strength or muscle or performance is different than the intensity that's required to maintain. So I would, it's, I think this is going to be almost entirely about your mentality. Can I maintain my fitness and not try to improve anything simultaneously work, maintain mobility and improve my energy and feel better and sleep and recover better. That'll set you up better than trying to improve anything right now. Cause you're already pushing yourself. Noah, do you have mass performance? I do. Yeah. That was actually the first program I bought. So I, yeah, I would focus uh, on the mobility days. I'll just get maps prime pro. I'm going to, do you have maps prime pro? I do not know. All, all right. Let me send that to you because in Prime Pro, there's mobility movements for different joints of the body. And with that, you can pick and choose what you want to do and literally spend, you know, 15 minutes twice a day on different mobility movements in there for different parts of your body and yeah. do them in ways that feel recuperative. Um, I, I think that'll be your best bet. Yeah, you're going to adapt real quickly with all the conditioning that they're going to throw at you. So, um, yeah, it's really just about keeping your body as healthy and recovered as possible now going into it. And then, you know, your mental discipline is going to be challenged and that's like pretty much just on you. Yeah. About the only thing I would let, I would, I would consider some body weight stuff. I would let them do sit ups, push ups, you know, body weight, pull ups. He's already feeling dead by Friday. Well, I, that's, say. I mean, that's, I would let you when you feel good, right? So if you felt like this yeah. was an easier week or you felt great, you felt rested or maybe on Sunday, like, and you wanted to do something, I would do the things that you're going to be required to do in the test. And they would be body weight type stuff. Um, Cause it sounds like you're yeah. doing enough conditioning through the week. Yeah. I just can think of it this way. No, it's like, um, if you can't, if you don't have the fitness now, then yeah, you'd have to improve your fitness in order to, to, to do what you want to do. But if your fitness is already there, now it's just a game of, can I go in feeling as good as possible? Yeah. Because you know what they're going to do when you're in the school. The goal is to see who breaks, right? Their, their goal isn't to improve your fitness when you're in ranger school. The goal is, let's see who can, who can go it, through this. Endure it. Endure this. And, you know, you fresh feeling good versus you almost overtrained, pushing to the limit. Like, which version of you is more likely to be able to survive what they're going to throw at you? You know, I'm going to argue all day long that it's the fresh kind of, you know, healthy version of you. So that's what I would try and do. I try and go in as, as feeling as good as possible. Awesome. All right. We'll send over prime pro to you. But, and, hey, by thank the way, so much. by the way, thanks for what you do, huh? Hey, and thank you guys. Yeah, no, uh, no problem. Keep, been, keep us I, safe. I, I, yep. oh, and, uh, one of the coolest things is, I mean, I've learned so much from you guys. I was a personal trainer in the past and I've learned so much, but the coolest thing has been getting my wife to listen as well and watching the way she approaches fitness transform. Um, so I just thank you guys so much for that. Oh, awesome. good deal. Thanks. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Noah. Yeah. I, uh, uh, that has to be one of the hardest things to understand for someone athletes too, right? Yeah. Athletes will go into season mm -hmm. and, or they're in season and they're like still trying to improve their performance. It's too much. It, it, like if you just try to stay healthy 
when you're pushing your body like that, you're going to do way better than trying to constantly, because trying to improve is like, you're pushing your body harder um, to get those adaptations. Well, if you're already at the limit, um, you're asking for trouble, especially when you go into, you know, 60 something days of, of them trying to break you down. You know, that's gonna be real hard. Well, that's just, yeah, you're gonna fight your athletic mind of, of always trying to to pursue, uh, you know, something like really intensively hard. And it's like your job as a coach is to pull, you know, that mentality back a bit to to keep them healthy and fresh and, and keep the longevity of, of their uh, performance uh, throughout the season. Yeah, I feel like it's a common theme for people that have like an athletic background or, or someone yeah. like this that, you know, you those people have the tendency to overdo it thinking that, you know, I'll, I'll muscle my way through it or more is better. And you're constantly having to, to pull back on them. Like they don't need to do that. I think that, you know, it speaks to the, the athletic mindset of, and, and there's some value to that, right? That's why I think it's why it's such a challenge and why we're always having to have this conversation yeah. is. That's why I know, asked them, like, do you think you're fit enough now? Right. Because mm -hmm. that's a totally different answer if totally. you said no. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and there is, there is, you know, the there's benefits to training your your mind to push beyond, right? And the, the, to, to gain that mental fortitude. But you at, at, at the expense of potentially wearing down your joints yeah. or – you know, not allowing your body to recover. There's a very fine, well, just fine to get, line there. Just to get into these these training courses, you they've already you're already good. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's not mm -hmm. like anybody can sign up for it and then get in. Yeah. You get accepted. So he's already you, you have when you look at the pool of people that are in Ranger School or Navy, you know, the the SEAL, you know, training or whatever. You're looking at fit, good, like tr well trained people. Now it's okay. Now let's let's separate the, the the best from the good. So it's rarely an issue of fitness. It's, it's it, from the people I've talked to, at least. I have no, no experience in this. But. I, no, no, no. I've I've read that and seen that firsthand. It's not at all. In fact, it's if you were to look at a lineup of bodies and we were mm. judging by yeah. the, it's not the guys who who pass and kill it are not the ones that look all yeah, jacked the, and yeah, not the most physically impressive is, yeah. yeah it's the mentally tough and and too and like he said the, like this has been a problem with a lot of guys is you know bodies breaking down through this process which eliminates them yeah. so it, it is really at high priority that your body's in a healthy condition yeah. and state for you to be able to preserve its way through. yeah and i did i did like that i had the opportunity to talk about body fat percentage because when people think <laughs> super fit you know, ready to go through the challenge. They can <laughs> cover, cover of a magazine. You don't want to go. You do not want to go into something like this at 7%. No, the reason fat. why I said lean, because in his question, he actually said he needed to lose 35 or 40 pounds. We never touched that's on that. That's a big that. difference. Yeah. That's yeah. Big. Yeah. So I'm like, you mm. know, you getting leaner is going to help dramatically. If you're carrying an extra 35 pounds on you and you're going oh, into yeah, a ranger school or seal school, because a lot of stuff is body weight, like reducing your body weight and getting your body fat percentage down is going to help tremendously. Doug, what is the, uh, what is the success rate of Ranger School? Let me is, it it less than, is it less than half? Oh, it's got to be. Oh, uh, yeah, I would imagine. It's so got to be. Really? More, more than half well, I know, fail? Yeah, because again, like to your point, I've I've trained some Navy SEALs and it was like, it was it was like probably, I Most. don't know, like, yeah, like 2% or something, like crazy. I think it's better. I think it's more like than 60% fail or so only 40 succeed yes wow yeah. more and, and 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 there's already a selection bias right going that's why it. that's kind of crazy right <clears throat> like if you're if you're going to ranger school you're already the you know the one percent of, yep. of that group right and then to know that more than half of your your friends are going have to you fail. ever watched like what training looks like what i have like reality show yeah you got to believe that that's that's a edited cleaned up version too of it really happens when the cameras are off of course yeah 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 this is what we can show you yeah <laughs> right that's yeah, i can't show you like messing with their sleep and all this other stuff yeah. yeah our next caller is austin from michigan what's up austin how can we help you hey guys uh hope you're all doing well uh so before i get into the question i just want to thank you all for all of the uh content you put out especially for trainers like myself it's a really good reference tool cool um, thank you so my question is about MAPS performance. So uh, for a little background, I've been lifting for about eight years. Most of it's been like powerlifting style training. I would say about, you know, three quarters of it was that style of training. Um, in October of 2021, so this past year, I did the first phase of MAPS performance. And then after, right after the first phase, I kind of like sporadically signed up for a powerlifting competition with a friend. Um, so then I ran, I went from that and then ran in 
uh, Matt's power lift. I did that from start to finish. Um, and then and that was, let's see, that finished uh, end of January, uh, beginning of February ish. And then from there, I uh, decided to try like an Olympic weightlifting style program. Um, and I'm sure you guys are familiar with barbell medicine. Uh, I purchased their Olympic weightlifting program and tried that out. Um, and the whole purpose of it was I wanted to increase my vertical, um, and not the whole purpose, but that was like a big thing. And I just wanted to learn something different. Um, I did that for like a month, maybe three weeks. And then I started playing some pickup basketball, um, again, that I haven't done in a while. So then I thought, oh, you know what? I should probably do something that's more, um, you know, athletic minded. So I started getting back into maps performance. Um, and I was just wondering, especially with my history of constantly training in like the low rep range, um, for the majority of my time. And especially the fact that I did specifically that leading up to this. Um, and then with that block of Olympic weightlifting where I'm doing like cleans and things like that, should I go just right into phase two of maps performance or should I start the whole thing over, um, from the first phase. Yeah, you know, Austin, you know, sounds like you could use phase two. Yeah. But you know, it's fun. Doing. You know, what you remind me of when I would interview people for, uh, when I'd hire people at the gym and they'd show me their resume and it'd be like, you know, the last two years I've had 17 jobs. I'm like, Oh, what's why are you switch around <laughs> so much? You switched around a lot and you did Olympic lifting for three weeks. That's like a very short period of time to learn Olympic lifting. Yeah. So here's my question to you. <laughs> are you going to follow maps performance all the way through? Yeah. And I've, I've followed, uh, some of your programs before all the way through. Right. I followed Maps Powerlift all the way through and Maps Strong all the way through. Cool. Um, nice. really liked both of those. And the the only reason I stopped the Olympic weightlifting was just because I wanted to get a uh, quicker laterally. And um, because I I didn't I didn't think I was gonna start playing basketball again. I just kind of did it sporadically. It was like, man, this is fun. I'm gonna get back into it. So like, eh, I feel like I should be doing something that has more. Or, um, you know, some more movement outside of just one plane of motion, essentially. Yeah. Well, two ways I would do this. I would either do one week of phase one and then get into phase two, or I would do an addition, an extra phase, a week of phase two. So you can okay. go into phase two. I would do an extra week though. I wouldn't do three weeks of it. I do four weeks before moving on uh, to the next. The phase. truth is though, nothing is wrong with where he, I mean, he could literally start anywhere. It's been long yeah. enough that it's not, I get this question a lot. So I'm glad we're answering it. Cause it, I get it in my DM all the time where someone's like, you know, started one of our programs straight away for a little bit or got sick or was out for a month or two. And then they're like, should I pick up where I left off or should I start over? You've been doing something different enough than, than that, that you could technically start yeah. back all over if you wanted or pick up right where you left off. But there's not a wrong answer here. I don't. Yeah, think. no, I agree with that. I also though, too, like just from what you've described in the last you know, a few months or whatever of your training has been very, you know, predominantly sagittal plane driven type training. Correct. So I, I do think you're going to get a lot of benefit, um, you know, mixing that up and, and giving your body new stimulus and really like challenging the joints, um, from different angles that way. And that's phase two is really good for that, uh, specifically in, in the mobility sessions on top of that, just to start really reinforcing the, you know, stability and structure, you know, around the joints. Uh, if you're trying to, to pursue something explosive, like increasing vertical jump. Okay. So we need to really reinforce these joints to be able to handle that kind of excess force that you're going to need to then apply, uh, you know, around the ankles, mm. knees, everything else. Why do you think? Do you, what do you think about uh, what I said about adding an extra week? Because I feel like you would benefit from an extra week of phase two. Yeah, definitely. I think again, yeah, I think that's been something that you've sort of just skipped past and then kept going. And so I, I would live in phase two for for you know as long as um you like know four for, or five weeks. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good idea. As oh. as far as uh, vertical goes, if you're not following uh, Paul Fabrit's PGF performance, uh, I mean, he's, I yeah, he, I love his content. Yeah, no, he's the goat when it comes to vertical jump. So, uh, yep. that, I mean, and I know he has a program along uh, along those lines too. So, if that's something that you yeah. are really trying to pursue, um, nothing's going to do do anything as far as programming better than than probably following his yeah. program for vertical jump. Now, now you already have a uh, mass performance, right, Austin? Yes, I do. And you're a trainer? Yep. Do you have uh, Maps Prime Pro? I do. I have Maps Prime and Prime oh, Pro. I okay. use them Good very, thing. very often. 
thank God I was like, I was, if I was waiting for Adam to explode. <laughs> He's said, big, no. you're an asshole. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I would also, I, I would utilize a lot of Maps Prime Pro too uh, for someone like you because you're, you're like, a, like you said, you're so powerlifting uh, experienced uh, that the mobility in Prime Pro is going to be really valuable to someone like you. Okay. Awesome. All right, man. Thanks for calling in, huh? Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah, I, I tell you, um, a lot of sagittal, tri- uh, you know, plane type people have no idea how much they would <laughs> sagittal benefit. Sagittal plane type people. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Doesn't that sound funny? <laughs> what like, dude, it just happens. I mean, it's yeah. yeah it, you just realize you just naturally gravitate to that because it's just what you love to do. And but they uh, have no idea the value they would get from training in like phase two maps performance for four or five weeks yeah. and then going back to well, their old training. It'd be well, like everything's a, geared around yeah. that, right? Like in the gym, like it's all set <sighs> up for, you know, primarily sagittal train, uh, train. So it takes, it takes some effort to get outside the box to really like move your body laterally to twist and rotate. And um, I mean, it takes some good programming to uh, introduce all that stuff. It sounds like he has that, that, that common trainer disease too, of like wanting to do kind of everything, you know, that's so, what he was. That's why, that's why I said, or, you ever get that by the way, you ever get a resume oh, and you look yeah. at it and you're like, Wow, you've worked at 15 places in the last year. Yeah. I'm not going to hire you. Those are red flags. Yeah. 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 You're not committed to anything, guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I have tons of experience, though. Yeah, not the same thing. No, I, I think- girlfriends. I think yeah. that phase two of mass performance uh, is so valuable to people who are interested in, in stuck and plateaus uh, when it comes to building strength in, in the traditional lifts. Like you do four or five weeks of that, go back to your original training, watch what happens. Massive benefit. Yeah. Our next caller is Emily from Canada. Emily, how's it going? How can we help you? Good. How are you guys? Good. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, no problem. All right. So my question revolves around reverse dieting. I have been reverse dieting for five months and I'm kind of just looking to lean out a bit for the summer. Um, so I'll get going with some background information. So I was a competitive dancer my whole life, ate whatever I wanted just burn off all the calories at dance four to five nights a week. I then quit dance when I was 14, still ate anything I wanted. Then when I turned 15, I wanted to lose weight. So I did my research and I learned I had to be in a calorie deficit. So I went through a period of time eating 600 to 800 calories. And I know that was very wrong. So For a few years, I never really went over 1,400. I had a coach who once put me up to 1,700 right away, gained some weight from that. And when I was done with him, I ended up going back to around 13 to 1,400. And so early November of 2021, I, after listening to you guys for a while, I was like, I need to reverse diet. And I've gone from 1,300 calories to about 2,400 calories in oh. five months. And I have, I have not gained a pound of weight. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I don't, awesome. I'm like confused because <laughs> I was expecting I was ready for that. I changed my training from hypertrophy based always to strength. I have not really gone over eight reps in about five months. So I just bought your power bundle, actually. Those are the two programs I've wanted to try for so long. I wish I had powerlifting during this reverse dieting phase, but I'm wondering where I should go from here. I'm not sure. It is hard for me to eat over 2,300 calories now. My appetite is just going down. So I feel like I'm in a okay place to cut, but at the same time, I'm like wondering, I never even really got into a big bulk. Like I used your macro macro calculator and it said I should eat about 2,600 calories, but I could never really get above 24, 25. So I'm wondering if I got the full benefits from a bulk reverse diet and if I am in a good place to cut a little bit. You're in a phenomenal I, place. Yeah, you're doing awesome. You're in a phenomenal place. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, to, to go from 1,400 to 2,500 calories is incredible. And to not <laughs> to not have put on any real body fat, even if you did put on some body fat. Did you fat. get stronger in that period of time? Yes. I know my lifts have definitely increased. And I'm not sure if it's from lifting low weights. I never really did that in the past. I would try for like one rep maxes, but I never did like 
five by five, six by four, stuff like that. Yeah. So you, you did the. I have noticed you, getting you, stronger. You did the the perfect thing, right? So you, you <laughs> took you transitioned into a a training modality that you you don't ever do, and you've started mm-hmm. to increase calories, focusing on strength. Like you're, and you're the ideal situation. You're exactly what I try and do to any client when we when we first get started. Is I want to build their metabolism up to a place to where they you say exactly what you just said, which is I it's I have a really hard time getting to 2,600 calories, just a lot of food, and you comfor- yeah. you comfortably could go down the other direction and be totally fine. That's where you mm-hmm. want to be. This is a perfect place to start a nice little cut. Um, and then as far, I guess what programming, uh, what have you ran strong? What, what else have you done of ours? No, I have never done one of your programs. I, so I'm still eating about 2,300 calories, 2,400 calories per day, depending on my appetite. Um, I was planning to start cutting. I don't, it's not like I'm bikini competitor or anything. I just have never went in a phase to try and gain a lot of muscle. I've always wanted to gain muscle, but I've never really tried to eat enough and train to build muscle. So I kind of just want to cut just to see some of my progress. And I will definitely do this again next year and hopefully increase my resting metabolism even more. So I do want to try strong starting April, I guess. Strong's going to be great. And also you got stronger. I wouldn't be, I mean, it sounds like you probably did get leaner and built some muscle through this reverse diet process. (laughs) I feel like, well, if if your weight stayed the same and you're stronger and eating that many more calories, you probably built some muscle and burned some body fat. Yeah. Yeah, I also didn't do any cardio. All I, I inclined walk sometimes, but that's just for like mental health, just oh, relaxing, it's, walking. It's, it's so almost, it's almost I haven't like, really done much cardio. It's almost like we tell the truth when we tell people <laughs> yeah. what to do. Yeah. You listen, you guys see what happens. Yeah. Awesome. We're like oracles. No, it's it, it works. It works <laughs> like this very consistently. We're just working with your body instead of against it. Um, and you know, here's something to consider. Right, a couple things. One, you probably built muscle and burn body fat as evidenced by your strength increases and the fact that your body weight didn't change and that you can eat so much more. And then the second thing is this, is that there's a range of calories your body will burn with your current lean body mass. In other words, your body can learn to become more or less efficient with calories and your body has learned to become less efficient with calories, which is a good thing because now you can eat so much more and stay relatively lean. Now, I right. if your goal is to get a little leaner, you could totally cut from here. I think you're in a good position to do so. Um, although I would say if you're kind of comfortable with your current body fat percentage, just see how strong you can get. Cause you, the, the, the longer you stay here, the longer you stay in this position where you're eating and fueling your body and getting stronger, the easier it's going to be to get lean. And dare I say, it might start to happen on its own. I've seen this happen with clients before where, right. where they boost their metabolism, they're lifting, they're getting stronger. They're just staying active. They cut out all the crazy cardio, just like what you're saying. And then they Mm -hmm. just slowly, their body just gets leaner and leaner and leaner on its own without them having to cut calories. What a great position to be in. So if you're comfortable and you're like, you know, I think I could stay like this if I, if I had to, let me just see what'll happen. I would say, just stay where you're at, follow strong, keep getting stronger and you'll probably get leaner. It might be a little slower, but you'll get leaner anyway. She could also do this though. This right. What's great is that you're in such a good position. We have lots of options, right? Yeah, so you can almost do any program. I, I would love to see, <laughs> I would be based off of what you're telling me, I would throw you on a two week cut and then go, then throw you back on a higher calorie and focus on strength. So like if we want to just, if you want it to reveal, right. Some of the muscle that you've probably built by leaning out a little bit, I mean, uh, where your metabolism at, all the strength you build. You're like 1,800 calories. Yeah. You drop for two weeks, okay. drop for two weeks down to like 1,800 calories. And I guarantee you're going to lean out nice. And then after that two week, bump them back up and then, uh, you know, transition into one of the programs. I don't know where you're at right now on the programming, but you know, any of those are going to be great. You know, Emily, I'm going to ha- have a couple of the questions for you. Um, cause okay. the, you, you mentioned when you were uh, 14, 15, how old are you now? I'm 18, 18. almost 19. Okay, okay. So that was only a few years. You're still real young. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you, how do you feel about your, I, obviously it's changed. Okay. But how do you feel about your relationship to food? If you were, if do you feel, and you have to be very honest, do you, could you see yourself going in the opposite direction? If you start to cut where you get obsessed with cutting more and more and more, or do you feel like that's behind you? Sorry. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. I, 
love where I'm at right now. Like, I think I'm eating a really good amount of calories. Like I'm, it's hard for me to even get over 300 grams of carbs. Like every single day, my macros are around, um, 140 grams of protein, give or take sometimes I'm down like 120, but, um, I weigh about 140 to 145 fluctuates throughout the day, but I haven't gone over 145 throughout this whole process. So wow. how, I started at 140. How tall are you? I'm 5'4". Five, 5'4". Four. Five, four. Yeah. You're, you, you got a good amount of muscle too. And if you feel pretty, <laughs> so here's the deal. Like you could definitely do what Adam said, uh, or you could just stay where you're at. I, here's what's going to happen. Here's what I think. If you stay where you're at and just keep getting stronger, I think you're going to just get leaner slowly. You're just going to keep getting leaner slow. Your body is working so well for you. Let me ask you this. How's your energy? How's your sleep? Uh, do you feel sharp? Does your memory feel good? Do your hormones feel balanced? Does everything feel like it's, it's in, al in alignment? Since I've been eating more, I've noticed my skin has gotten so much better. I don't break out as much. Uh, I feel really good energy. I did just start a new job. I work at Starbucks. And um, so I do have a lot of 5.30 a.m. shifts. I work the mornings a lot. Mm. So on those nights, the lowest amount of sleep I get is six hours, but that is really low for me. And I try to aim for at least eight hours every single night. So good. my sleep is normally very good and, how, and how, hormones have been good. Yeah. I was just going to say like, how do you feel with your, with your moods and your hot, cold tolerance? Do you feel like you're warm more often, cold more often, or do you feel like you're pretty, pretty balanced with that? Well, I know when I was eating such low calories, I was cold 24 right. seven and it was, like one of the worst side effects of that, it was awful being so cold all the time. I feel like I've been pretty normal now. I live in Canada, so it is pretty cold here. <laughs> so at, at, at cold your, in the winter, of course. At, but. Because of your age and where you're at and where you came from, I would, I would, I would just keep you going. And I'd you say just get stronger. You don't, you don't think that she would benefit metabolically from doing a mini cut considering she's been in a bulk for so long? I mean, yeah, maybe, but she's so young and everything's on, well, like, yeah. everything's like running on, on all cylinders. I'm I like, mean, there's nothing, there's no, that's you don't want to fix what's not broken, you know? And, and I think she's crushing it. And I'm telling you, <laughs> it, it, but based off what you're telling me, I feel like if you stay on this and just, you change the programming, you're going to see yeah. your body. Okay, here's one of the greatest things to witness is when somebody doesn't try, cut their food and they just work out and they notice improvements in performance and they start to get leaner. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. You're like, Oh my God, I'm just getting leaner. Well, you also, you are in a place to transition someone towards, you know, it sounds like you got a good handle on macros and you've been tracking or send to move towards yes. more intu <laughs> intuitive eating. This might be a place yeah. where I take you and say, listen, let's actually not stress about the calories. Eat when you're hungry, make good choices. If I have you track anything, pay attention to your protein. Make sure you hit your protein intake. Sounds like you're doing a great job already. Mainly, maybe just focus on that and not really sweat. Am I at 2,200 calories? Am I at 26? Who cares about that? Go off of how you feel and eat. And, you know, you might be in a perfect place to actually not even worry about tracking I mean, calories. that's a good point because, uh, you know, Emily, what Adam's referring to now is uh, you're in a good position to, to kind of find balance, lifelong balance with exercise, uh, with fitness right. and nutrition, you know? Uh, when, yeah. And once you really get that's that, definitely a goal. Exactly. And once you find that balance and you start to really fall in love with the journey, um, then everything's easy. Okay. It, it, once you don't, if you're just focused on the goals and the journey isn't something you necessarily enjoy, it gets really tough. But if you mm -hmm. love the journey, you're like, I really look forward to my workouts. And, you know, I'm not stressed about eating. It's not really stressful to me. And I feel healthy. I feel fit. I like the way I look. I don't have any huge you know, uh, critiques and, you know, it, just kind of staying there. Like this is a long-term amazing approach. And what's going to happen as you get older is you're just going to get more and more fit over time just by doing that. Like you're so young. I mean, you're going to get, you're going to get into your thirties. Look, I'll tell you what, you stay on this track, your fitness level is going to be ridiculous when you're 30. You know, that's, that's, and that's when most people are like, oh, I'm, it's over for me. Your fitness is going to be, is going to be ridiculous. So you're in a really good position <laughs> I think what Adam said is a really good Thank point. I, I wouldn't stress too much. I think you're you're on such a right track. Just enjoy the day to day process, and it sounds like you are. It sounds like you're enjoying yes. you know, what you're doing. So yeah, this month actually is like three years of me consistently lifting, like six to five to six days per week. I always take a so my split right now has been legs, upper body, legs, chest, shoulder, triceps, back, and biceps, and then legs again. So. I am on a split right now. I'm really excited to start with strong, something totally new, never done it before. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. And um, 
Side note, I'm also in kinesiology in university, and I'm also taking my personal training certification. Yeah. I should be getting that pretty soon. So, yeah, fitness really is my number one passion. Oh, hell yeah. You're going to make a great trainer, too, <laughs> just yeah, from your experience. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to send you the intuitive nutrition guide. I think it'll be good reading for you. Okay. All right. So I, I think that'll awesome. be something that you'll be... That'll that'll bring some value. And I, thanks for your story. I appreciate this. I, I, I think a lot of people <laughs> Thank listening you so much. will get some value out of this. So yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Emily. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Thank you so much. Uh, nothing feels better than to hear a, a success story success like that. Right? Isn't that great? Yeah. What a great position to be in, uh, like she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, there's no wrong answers. Great, we could, we could have sat focus. there and probably talked for another 45 minutes about all the possible things that you, yeah. could, that you could do. I well, just keep fun part as a coach. Now it's just like, I just yeah. can introduce something to you and you're going to benefit from yeah, it. Yeah, and I, I just keep thinking of her age. I mean, she's 19. I'm like, oh man, the most valuable thing that she could do right now is to develop is to continue to develop that good relationship with Well, that's what made me enjoy the process. That's what made me go, I mean, I would probably push her towards intuitive eating. Say, totally. Hey, that makes a lot of sense. You, you're yeah. figuring out this weight training thing. You've got it down three years consistently right now. Totally. You understand the importance of programming. We, we figured that out. You've tracked macros and calories mm -hmm. long enough to where you've reverse dieted from 1,400 to 2,400. Hey, yeah. let's talk about what it looks like to not have to track right. again. Yep. And, and, and naturally, you know, she may go through many uh, deficits and then yes. kind of weave in and out and she'll see, you yeah. know, success yeah. that way and, too. And you could hear in her voice the excitement and the happiness that she has around it which it just makes me so excited and the fact that she's going to become a, a trainer and coach she's going to be a, she's going to do a damn good job with her clients so that was that was a good one our next caller is steven from north carolina steven what's happening how can we help you hey sir how's it going man good hey first and foremost man i just really want to thank each of you guys for the health and wellness that you freely share um, but most importantly, what I don't think you get a lot of um, credit for is the integrity and the character um, that you guys put in each episode. So thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank right you, on. Steve. Thanks, man. Yeah. And then, so just to go into the background, currently I'm in, um, I was in uh, phase one of Maps Anabolic. Now I'm in phase two. I'm training Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, I currently use an app to track my macros at about 205, 85, and 350. Um, and I'm about 90% compliant with that. And I threw a couple of free meals in there. So about on average, I'm about 3,500 calories, um, a day per week. And then, um, currently probably around 220, 225 at about 18% body fat. Sleep is good about seven, to eight hours. Obviously just listen to the episode this week. I need to focus on those things for about 30 days. Um, but I got a two part question for you guys today. Um, I want to be around eight, per, eight to 10 percent body fat for vacation in the first week of August. Um, and I just bought the transformation bundle at the first of the year. So I'm looking to what's the best way to utilize, utilize the transformation bundle for maximum results. And then the second part of that question is my legs are my lagging body part, in my opinion. Is it possible to use the days off to bring up my quads and hamstrings? You're not going to need to with the programming. The there's uh the programming you're going to be hitting your legs three times a week in there, so they're going to come up. I promise you. Um, so you don't. Uh, I think I would be worried about you doing extra work and uh, overtraining, and then actually hindering our results. Yeah, is Maps aesthetic in that in that bundle transformation? Yeah, it's um, anabolic performance. And aesthetic. Aesthetic. Yeah. Yes, so sir. with aesthetic, you can do the focus sessions with a little quad and hamstring, but I would do that at the end. So you, yeah, you, when it gets there, he's, yeah. not gonna, he's not even going to be there by August. August, he's going to be in the second program. So he's, but I mean, you, it's going to, trust yeah. me, your legs are going uh, to develop uh, following uh, anabolic the way you are right now. They, they definitely will come up that way. So the legs thing, I'm less worried about that. And as far as the transfer, just transforming to eight to 10%, that's all going to be our nutrition. I mean, the programming is taking care of what you what you need to be doing there. Uh, it's really going to come down to diet, and you you kind of already alluded to like, yeah, you kind of you you have a few <laughs> off meals here and there. Uh, you know, when you're trying to to reduce body fat percentage, you have a time frame to get there. Uh, this is where you got to tighten your game up. There's you're not going to be able to uh, you know out train the diet like or work off. Those those things you are better off with tightening up the diet totally uh, than trying to add more or do other things to get you to that body fat. That's the that's the recipe for failure, and that's what I think a trap that a lot of people fall into is, you know, they want to get this certain you know body fat percentage, 
and their idea is I will just ramp up my activity or ramp up my training to get there when they, the answer lies within your nutrition is, you know, treating the same discipline that you have towards your programming and training towards your diet. Now you're obviously already tracking. So you have a very good start. 3,500 calories is a, is a healthy place to be. Um, but I would challenge you to be more consistent, uh, with the meals. And this is where we would go all probably on a little mini cut to see how your, your body responds, take 500 calories off of it for a couple of weeks and see what your body does. And then if I were to do anything more exercise and activity wise, it would be through just movement, like walking, you're just creating more steps, more activities. So your body's burning a little bit more calories. I wouldn't, uh, you know, ramp up a ton of cardio. And if I were to use cardio, it'd be towards the end. Like as we get closer to August, how many weeks do we have St Stephen, before you're, you, you, you want to be eight to 10%? 20 weeks. And then previously what I've done is I've done the exact opposite. Like I've done a lot more cardio. I've run five, six miles. Um, I've sled trained. I've done farmer's walks for 20 minutes, 25 minutes to try to just get that down. And then I just don't get the result that I want. Yeah. So I'll cut the calories. I'll increase the cardio. And this time I'm, I, I could care less about the number on the scale. Um, I really want to, I'm looking for the long-term results that'll help me sustain yeah. um, a solid body fat yeah. percentage. Yeah. You'll get endurance doing the other stuff that you said, but not the leanness necessarily. I, you know, you got to, you got 20 weeks. You want to drop about eight to 10% body fat. Very doable. Totally doable. So I would go, if you're at 3,500 calories, you could go between 2,500 to 3,000 calories uh, a day consistently. And you'll see your body fat start to come off your body, especially if you're, if you're strength training properly, which you are, cause you got the the maps programs and just keep it there. And I go between 2,500 to 3,000. So how would you, now you, you don't want to know how do, how do I judge where to go? Watch your body fat percentage of performance. You notice too much of a drop in performance, bump it back up to 3,000. Body fat's not coming off fast enough. Go back down to 2,500. But I'd bounce between that, between a 500 to 1,000 calorie deficit. And ideally what you would want to do is maybe two or three weeks before whatever event you're, you're trying to be lean for, to already be at your goal. And then what you do, and here's a nice little fun. So what exactly are you doing in August real quick? Uh, it's mancation. So every year, yeah. all of my buddies and uh, all of us go to Myrtle Beach and we just show up and oh, show bro. out, man. I'm, so I'm, it's just a... All right, check this out. Here's what we're going to do, right? This is, <laughs> this is Adam, Adam's Vegas uh, protocol. Here's the, the broski. Yeah, formula. so 2,500 to 3,000 calories, two or three weeks before you want to be the body fat percentage you want to be at. Then what you do is you you reverse diet going into the, uh, into the event. And you do a really minor reverse diet just to fill up the muscle bellies. Then when you hit the beach, you're gonna look jacked and you look really good. Yeah, the only thing I would probably add to what Sal said is because we have such a long time, 20 weeks, I would probably interrupt the cut every, I don't know, third or fourth week yeah, that's true. with a three to five day calorie surplus. So yeah, back up to 3,500 or something. Yeah, like so or maybe even a little positive, depending on where he's at, right? So I would I would give like listen to what Sal's saying, run that consistently for like and the I'm saying like three to five weeks, the way I would decide three or five weeks is the the speed of my results. So if I'm seeing great results day out, you know, week after week, I'm going to continue down that path. But sooner or later, what is going to happen is the body will start to adapt to that new caloric intake. Instead of getting crazier and reducing the calories more, I'd actually run you on a, on a, you know, three to five day a week at most a uh, calorie surplus the other direction and then go back down again to uh, dieting for the next because you have a long period because this is 20 weeks you have a lot of time I wouldn't want to keep you in a deficit for the next 15 to 20 weeks straight I'd want to interrupt that with some some calorie surplus days that would probably look somewhere between three and you know five to seven days of of a calorie surplus and then back down does that make sense yes sir cool yes all right Perfect man sense. very yeah. good yeah Appreciate it, gentlemen, man. I really appreciate the advice. Thank you, guys. You got it, brother. Thank, Thank you, you very much right. for calling in. Let's go. Yeah, yes, sir. No problem. No problem. Yeah, Adam, didn't you, when you were coaching, you had people that would hire you for like, I'm going to Vegas in six weeks. I did. Or I'm going to, and that's right. about like the best they can. I for, did. I, had a, I actually had a dude that was like really good shape, and he just wanted me to take him to like the next level. And so you do like you would do like carb loading and sodium. Oh, everything cool. ready. Yeah. yeah. I wish I remember it. So that well, there's a, one guy specifically who comes to mind because he was with me for so long, and uh, and he, he and he was probably the best at like following it to a T, right? Like he yeah. literally did everything I said. 
And boy, he would send me, you know, pictures of him with like six girls in Vegas. <laughs> or, oh yeah, dude. I'd get all these pictures and be like, thanking me like crazy. Bro, you're the man. I love you. Do this and that. Adam's like, this is why I do what I do. I do. It was <laughs> yeah, a little bit of me living vicariously through him. I'm not going to lie. So it was, uh, it was pretty funny to watch. But yeah, no, we had like a little protocol for... For getting ready for, which was very similar to like getting ready for a stage. Exactly. I mean, yeah. Same thing. I, yeah, you obviously, get the muscle build. He's full, yeah. lean, dry. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't. Stuff. You don't want to be so. Uh, you don't want to be so de de depleted, like you were saying. That's why you were saying. You know why the increased calories leading up to the last. And he could do that literally, actually, just the last like five days. Yeah. He could surplus, right? So you could be depleted heading in, and then the last three to five, I would start bumping his calories to fill up all the muscle bellies, and it makes a, a world of a difference on the yeah, way you look. That's you know? super awesome. So. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me only on Twitter at mindpumpsal.